Hey everyone, Eric here, thanks for tuning in. Separation season is here, and by that I mean the weeks following Thanksgiving. For most people, after their bellies are full of turkey and their Christmas presents are opened, they never really truly recover from vacation mode. Because of this, they'll end up cruising through the end of the year and start making New Year's resolutions that are destined to fail, considering that 80% of them are given up on by mid-February. Today, I'm going to be covering some of my career, health, and personal goals that I've set for myself in 2021, and how you can formulate your own goals and actually achieve them as well. I also wanted to go over some of the biggest lessons that I learned from 2020 that I think will be particularly relevant for you in 2021. It's my birthday today, so nothing would make me happier than if you watched until the end of this video, left a like on it, and subscribed to my channel if I provided you any value. And also, feel free to comment below some of the goals that you have set for yourselves in 2021 and the steps that you'll take in order to achieve them. Having said that, let's get started. You might be wondering why I call the holidays separation season. The reason is because the few people that actually set ambitious but realistic goals for the following year, as well as finish off the year strong, are going to be miles ahead of the people that let off the gas too early. Most of us don't get back onto the grind until closer to February so if you really think about it, that's almost an entire two months out of the year that have been relatively unproductive because of the holidays. And not only that, but the majority of resolutions fail as well. Now don't worry, I too am super guilty of this. I've made a commitment to myself that I will not let another year go by without having ambitious goals set for the following year. And not only that, but since I'm sharing these goals with you guys, I have nowhere to hide if for whatever reason I'm unable to achieve them. Because I don't want to fail in front of all of you, I would imagine that that's going to give me a pretty significant boost of adrenaline come next year. Having said that, here are some of the things in 2021 that I'm going to be focusing on. I thought I'd start with my career and investing goals since unsurprisingly that's the longest on my list. Now my first goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now I know that sounds pretty far-fetched considering I only have about 169 subscribers as of today, but I've heard that YouTube is exponential and not linear so I think it's a reasonable goal to set. As long as I continue to make videos on a weekly basis, I would imagine that I'd be able to hit those goals come next year. I'm also going to be rebranding pretty soon and creating merchandise such as hoodies, t-shirts, etc. Really minimalistic clothing as you would imagine. And then lastly, I want to continue growing my blog following so I can start making actual money off of ad revenue. My next goal is related to my nine to five life and that's to get promoted to an account executive. This is essentially a sales position that closes business. Right now I'm just sourcing deals for my account executive, but I feel ready to you know, actually close business myself. A always B, B, C closing, always be closing. And with this transition will also come a substantial boost in compensation as well. Next, I wanted to cover some of my net worth and investment goals. Now I'm more worth roughly $108,000 at the time of this recording, but my goal is to exceed $250,000 by the end of next year. And there are a few ways I think I can exceed this threshold. My first source of income is going to be coming from my full-time position in sales, and I think I could roughly make $100,000 post-tax. My next source of income will be coming from real estate. I'm in the market to make my first real estate purchase sometime in Q1 in the Bay Area, which happens to be a goal in itself. Now, by renting out the rooms individually, I should be able to cash flow at least a few hundred dollars per month, assuming that I put 20% down. Furthermore, it's also entirely possible that the real estate market increases in value which would also increase my net worth. Now, although I don't personally believe that California real estate can get any more expensive, I've been wrong over the past six months, so it's entirely possible. Hey, Snow, chill out, dude. Lastly, it would be fantastic if I could start making money from the content that I'm producing via The Millipreneur. Honestly, if I could make $5,000 from my brand this year, then I would be ecstatic. Those are the ways that I think I could hit my net worth goals in 2021. Now taking a quick break from my career and investing goals, I thought I would cover some of my personal and my health goals because I think they're equally important to your success. The first thing that I wanted to work on is being more empathetic. Honestly, everyone at my family dinner table thinks I'm an ass because I look at statistics and I draw conclusions based off of that. Sometimes statistics just simply don't paint the full picture. Other times people don't necessarily want to hear your statistics and just want to feel like they're being heard. So I'm going to do my very best to be much more conscientious in 2021 and also check in on my family and the people that I care about often. Next, I wanted to make sure that I'm meditating and exercising at least three times per week. I've gotten into a pretty good habit of working out multiple times per week, but I've kind of fallen off when it comes to meditation. Mental health is so important for your success, so I would recommend using the application Headspace on your iPhone or Android or whatever you have. Andy Pudicom is the founder of this company and he has such an interesting background story so I would highly recommend checking him out. The next goals that I've set for myself are related to some of the entrepreneurial ventures that I have in mind for next year. First, I want to start the Millipreneur podcast and interview some of the brightest minds within the startup industry. Unsurprisingly, it's been relatively difficult to actually get responses from the founders of these companies, but I'm going to continue at it. I also plan on earning my real estate license next year, since that should save me a pretty substantial amount of money on closing costs when I actually purchase investment properties. Next, I'm going to rebrand the Millipreneur and come up 
up with a new logo. I've got a friend working on this currently because I have no artistic abilities whatsoever. And finally, I wanna grow my business Instagram account to 10,000 followers and also learn how to make financial TikTok videos. I honestly have no idea how you Gen Zers do it. So if you have any suggestions on how to build an audience using these channels, feel free to leave a comment below. Great, so now that you know my goals and how to formulate some of your own, I wanted to go over some of the biggest lessons that I learned this year. I think the takeaways from these lessons can definitely have an impact and help you have a better 2021. The first lesson that I learned or rather solidified in my mind is to not expect the media to provide you an accurate representation of what is actually happening or at least without bias. Now, news outlets in the media are incentivized to create catchy subject lines, controversial content, and their stories are really meant to fit a specific narrative. Because of this, I think it is so important for you to do your own research versus letting the media do that research for you and making decisions for you. Take some time to actually research the evidence and statistics behind a claim. For example, listening to politicians lie to the public and debate each other is relatively unproductive when you could just go ahead and look at their policies and what they've written thus far. That will give you a much better representation of who you are voting into office. Next, never let the most emotional people in your family make the biggest decisions. Lives can literally be destroyed from one bad decision. For example, if you took all of your money out of your 401k during March, you're probably pretty upset right now because the market not only recovered, but we're actually in a better place than what we were prior. So by making that one decision, you set yourself back financially quite a bit of time. The same lesson can be applied to this virus. Although it is a cause for concern, I'm not going to live my life in fear of getting this damn virus. I covered it in my previous videos and I'll leave a link in the description above in terms of the statistics of how many people have passed away, how many people have gotten it, etc. Thus, it is so important for you to think rationally during times of uncertainty versus letting the media and your emotions cloud your judgment. The last lesson that I learned is that there is always going to be a crisis on the horizon, so it is best to have your next moves mapped out. Every decade or so, there has been an event that has caught us by surprise. The virus of 2020 is obviously the most present in our minds currently. Now in 2008, we had the subprime mortgage crisis causing millions of people to lose their jobs and their homes. In 2001, we had the 9-11 attacks that led to the war on terror, or oil, in the Middle East. In the 90s, we had the dot-com bubble. In the 80s, we had a recession. And in the 70s, we had the energy crisis. Catching my drift? Because of this, it is so important for you to have diversity in your professional life. In other words, make sure not to put all of your eggs in one basket and have multiple streams of income. Expect that another crisis is around the corner and make sure not to wait until the next crisis in order to map out your next moves. And that's it. Like I said, it is my birthday today. So if I provided you any value, I would really appreciate it if you supported the channel, left a like on this video and subscribed. Thanks so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all next year. Bye now.